I'm Jason, and I'm glad that everybody can make it here today because that means we all have something in common. We all had to figure out how to get here, either by walking, bike, transit, or driving. And we all have our reasons why we chose to do it that way. It was the fastest, cheapest, or you just didn't have a choice. I study travel behavior, how people travel, and why they chose to do it that way. My interest in this started when I was an intern over at the Seattle Department of Transportation, and I was the guy that watched traffic cameras all day long. Here's what I saw. Congestion, and a lot of it. But I also saw this. Pedestrians, streetcars, bikes, and even a guy using rollerblades. And after sitting there for several hours, I began to wonder how all of these things fit together. What are their roles? How can we balance how people want to travel with equity and a clean, safe environment in mind. Because the problem, the problem is that private companies, public agencies, and academics don't understand how to achieve this balance, especially with the newcomers, one of them being ride hailing, Uber and Lyft, rides that you can hail with your smartphone. And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of reasons to have Uber and Lyft around. In many ways, they're better than taxis. People are using it to get to their doctor's appointments. But it's taking away from public transit ridership, and it's making traffic worse. If we understood how people were using ride hailing and why they chose to use it that way, we could expand upon these benefits and mitigate the problems. So how do I study ride hailing? I use Big data, millions of data points, each one representing when and where a trip begins and ends, how much it cost, and whether or not it was shared. Like an Uber pool, where you share your ride with a stranger for a lower cost. I included weather and what it would have taken for public transit to complete the same trip. And with all this data, I tried to find clusters, distinct types of rides, how people were using ride hailing. And after playing with the data, I found six. The first being rides that happen in bad weather. Rides late at night. Rides to and from the airport. Rides where transit is not at all competitive. It would have taken twice the time for public transit to complete the same trip. But there are rides where transit is highly competitive, where it would have taken half the time. And oddly, Shared rides were their own thing. And to me, that's unexpected. I tried to find out what was happening and found that only 25% of all, uh, all rides are being shared. And I thought that would be higher because they're relatively cheaper than a regular Uber. And I was hoping that it would be higher because they're more efficient. You only need one car instead of two or more to complete several trips all heading in the same direction. Still confused, I tried to find a relationship between the number of Uber pool rides being taken in a community with other variables, one of them being the social deprivation index, which is a measure of a community's poverty, unemployment, single parenthood, and households with no cars. Here's what that looks like here in Chicago, where we see low deprivation in the north side and high deprivation in the west and south side. I found that the more deprived a community is, the more likely they are to be using Uber Pool. And I reasoned that this is because they're relatively cheaper, and in many of these communities, public transit service isn't that great. And I think that this is a great thing, because that means that people are traveling when they might not have been able to otherwise if Uber Pool wasn't available. So with these results, I see that people are improving their lives. They're traveling. They're going to work. They're going to the kids' recitals or simply to the grocery store. But they're not doing so in a very efficient way. Again, only 25% of all of these rides are being shared. And we need to promote shared rides because that means there can be fewer cars on the road and fewer emissions. And we should be promoting transit in areas where it is highly competitive because there's travel time savings available to everyone. And this is the most efficient way to move people. Fewer cars again and fewer emissions. With these results, I see a path forward with my research. 
there needs to be more ways of travel. Where can all of these things fit? The dockless bike share systems and the electric scooters. And there also needs to be an understanding about why people are choosing to travel this way. So that means collecting more qualitative data to supplement the cold and hard big data that I used previously. The goal of this research is to go back to our communities and create policies and programs to keep on improving people's lives. Because what's at stake, what's at stake is equity and a clean and safe environment in our cities. Thank you. <laughs>